and the A-Team has arrived for uh, the Giant FM Morning Show. We're going to sit here and talk with Brian Johnson of the Fulton County Community Foundation. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are we doing today? Well, flurries are in the air. Uh, yes, it's, they are. It is that season, though, so <laughs> it'll probably rain or snow or be sunny or all of the above in the day. Yes, so. tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, we've got a bunch of things going on at the Community Foundation, um, and I'm going to kind of hit some random random topics this morning, but um, one thing I wanted to remind folks about last month, um, we talked about Bridges Out of Poverty and our yes. poverty simulation that yeah. we're, we're hosting um, in partnership with the Area Health Education Center in Casa, Fulton County. Um, this is an opportunity for a couple of, of trainings and a real life simulation. Um, so a poverty simulation is an event where um, folks get to come and kind of experience the role of living in poverty. Okay. So um, it, it's going to be put on by a group out of Indianapolis and um, we're really encouraging service providers or folks that, that may um, work with individuals that have um, economic situations um, to participate in this kind of gives you a real life understanding of of how things happen and, and why choices are made and and the ultimate goal is to be able to help better serve folks um, that we're working with so that's going to be on April 26th from 2 to 5 p.m. at the Fulton County Historical Society okay. um, just north of town um, we will have registration opening on March 1st so keep an eye out for that next week um, if somebody didn't receive the um, save the date information and they want to be added to that list, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, you can send me an email, Fulton at NICF.org, or um, give me a call, 574-224-3223. We'll make sure and get your name added to that list to send out um, the information. We'll be sending out the registration information, like I said, on March 1st, uh, okay. opening that up. So. Um, so that will be on April 26th, the poverty simulation, and then we're going to be offering the Bridges Out of Poverty program on April 27th. Um, this is a program that's based on um, a book, Bridges Out of Poverty, by Dr. Ruby Payne, yeah. um, and one of the co-authors of the, of the book, Terry Dresser-Smith, will be presenting that program. It'll be from 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. on April 27th, also at the Historical Society. Okay. Um, there is some cost involved for the Bridges Out of Poverty program. There's a $20 registration fee, but we will also include lunch with that on site as well. So um, both of those uh, programs, um, I'd encourage organizations, if you work with folks in poverty, and, and a lot of this really deals with generational poverty. So how do we better serve folks? How do we help them address situations that they may be in? Okay. So um, I'd encourage folks, if, if you're interested in that, um, please keep an eye out for that registration information. If you didn't get the first round of information, let me know, and we'll make sure and get you added to the list for the next one. So um, along those lines, um, we're looking to do some educational luncheons for area nonprofits. Okay. Um, a lot of times we have nonprofits in the area that are entirely volunteer based or may have one staff member that that's a part-time staff member that can help with things but um, we often try and help organizations if they have questions about things um, I know every organization's favorite thing is things like bookkeeping and tax records and stuff like that everybody gets so excited oh, about yeah. that no, I'm jumping out of my seat here yes I can, I can tell <laughs> I can see the excitement in your eyes um, but part of what we want to do is be able to offer the opportunity for organizations um, if they have an area that they think they would benefit from some additional training for us to be able to bring in an education workshop or a speaker to talk about a specific topic um, we're looking for feedback from area nonprofits. Um, so we just um, created a um, page on our website, and I'm going to give it to you because we don't have it published yet, but um, nicf.org forward slash non hyphen profit hyphen education forward slash 
If you can't remember that and you're on Facebook, we do have it on our Facebook page, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. You can go there and give us some feedback on what kind of topics would be useful for your organization. Um, if, if you have ideas and you, and you don't want to go to the website um, but want to shoot me an email, again, Fulton at NICF.org or um, the phone number works as well, 224-3223, um, and that's 574 area code. Um, and we're really looking for feedback from area nonprofits. What would be useful for you as an organization to, to learn more about? So um, we're looking at putting a series of workshops on through this year and, and possibly next year. Um, and, and really help organizations that all these organizations are exist because of volunteers. They may have some staff, but um, we want to be able to provide the resources for these organizations to be successful. So don't ever hesitate to reach out to us and say, hey, we'd like to know more about this, or we could really use some advice on this, or, or training on this, and, and we'll work to bring those programs here to, to help local nonprofits. So. Okay. So those are some of the current events that we have going on. Um, today what I wanted to talk about, in the past we've talked about the different types of funds that we have, yes. how they work. Today I wanted to talk about some specific funds. Okay. It's always fun to kind of hear the good things that are going on and, and learn about some of these things. So um, the first one that I'm going to start off with is the Kiwana Fall Festival Fund in honor of Luke Mate. And Here's your trivia question. What do you suppose that supports? Uh, the Kiwana Fall Festival. Hey, you are an excellent guesser here. <laughs> so, so this is a fund that was actually established. Um, Kiwana Heart is an organization in Kiwana that has helped with, with a number of projects. Um, but um, this fund was set up specifically by Kiwana Heart to support the Kiwana Fall Festival. I think okay. you've probably been over to that. Uh, a few it's, times. It's a pretty pretty fun time. It's it's yeah. something that um, the organizers, of course, Tom made, unfortunately, he passed away last year, but yes. um, he put a lot of, lot of sweat and heart into this festival and made it pretty awesome. And of course, Luke was the one that came up with the idea. So what better way to honor Luke than to have a fun that supports the fall festival yeah. in an ongoing way. But a wonderful time and, and part of what they do with this festival is try to make it affordable for anybody that can go. So they've had anything from free circus, free events, free rides for a number of years. The last few years they actually have free food for kids uh -huh. um, at different times. Um, and so it's, it's wonderful. So a family that may not be able to go to a fair and afford the rides and the food and all those things can can still have that same experience. And it's it's just really an amazing thing. People will, will look at me strange when I say, you know, this is a really big festival. They say, well, that's the town of Kiwana. How big can it be? And I say, oh, go well, and find out. Yeah, you, you're constantly pushing, not pushing yes. through, but you've got to finagle your way around people all and there, day. There's and always day. stuff going on when, I, when we say, hey, they have twelve or 15,000 people that go through this festival. Nobody mm -hmm. believes you. Until you actually go there and see us. So, exactly. Um, a wonderful example of of an opportunity locally to be able to support things in this. This is, if listeners remember our conversation about the different types of fund, this is an agency fund set up by the organization to support a cause within the organization. So um, a neat way to see that in action. Yeah. Um, the second fund that I wanted to mention was a designated fund. Um, the Olive Jane Hathaway Animal Center Supply Fund. Now, what do you suppose that supports? Uh, the supplies needed at the animal center. Hey, you're two for two so far. Yes. Okay, so this is this is a fund that was established um, in 2011 um, by Laura Snipes in memory of her mom, Olive Hathaway. Um, and um, for those, I, I didn't have the opportunity to meet her mother, but um, she was an animal lover to the core. Um, and, and her family has continued that and so this is a fund that Laura set up to be able to help um, provide support to the Animal Center um, and so every year the Animal Center gets a distribution from this fund based on the value of the fund and the fund has grown over the years as donors say hey you know what I'd like to support the animal shelter in an ongoing way this is one of the opportunities to be able to do that we've got an amazing facility here in our community 
um, that does a really great job of of finding homes for animals. We have one at home that has that came from the animal center and just has been a wonderful experience for us and we're very appreciative of that facility um, being here and taking care of animals I'm, I'm i'm a dog person i'll say that publicly so i'm a cat person your cat. okay so we've got the two main ones that they yeah. deal with covered here so yep. um, but just a wonderful facility to make sure that animals that are found in a less than perfect situation or maybe a stray or um, somebody even may not be able to care for an animal the way right. that they feel that they can. The Animal Center works to find homes for these. And this is one of the funds that helps support um, that crucial mission. All right, so we'll go to the next one, see if you can get this one. Okay. Grace United Methodist Church Fund. What do you suppose that supports? Uh, Grace United Methodist Church. Hey, very good. That's, that's one, um, we have a number of designated funds. Again, this was set up by a donor. Um, set up in 1995 to support the Grace United Methodist Church here in town, the, the mission that that church is, is providing. So um, we, we see a lot of this actually with churches have a number of funds that support churches, but the donor says, hey, I've been part of this church. I want to make sure that this goes on. So that fund is available and, and they use it to fulfill the mission of the church. So Yeah, they... Um they offer some uh, meals once a week yes, yes. to the community, and yeah. I'm sure that fund is great in helping. Yeah, free support free that. meals and, yeah. and different things that um, are offered to the community. Yeah, to, as as support. So. Okay, so number fund number four. Uh huh. Galen Smith Memorial Scholarship Fund. This is a basketball scholarship. Hey. It's not just specifically basketball, oh, but you, you knew sports. you knew more. Yes, yeah, sports, but basketball. <laughs> so you you say basketball. The fund was actually established. Um, Galen Smith was a longtime educator and coach yep. in our community, um, and this fund was actually established in um, last year, 2021, by some of the former players. And you say basketball, it was basically a basketball team yes. that got together and said, "Hey, we want to help establish this fund." Um, in memory of Galen. And so a lot of times we, we've just come through the time where students have applied for scholarships and oftentimes yeah. we'll have people say, you know, why does this scholarship have to include this? Or why does this scholarship have to include that? So some of the criteria that are included in, in Galen's scholarship are Rochester High School graduates, makes sense, multi-sport athlete, ah. A lot of the, the gentlemen that helped establish this fund were coached in more than one sport by Galen. Of course, basketball is the one that comes to mind when oh, yeah. you think about the undefeated Rochester yeah. team. Um, and, then, and then some preference given to students who have been part of the Rochester chapter of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Okay. Um, those were all things that were very important to Galen and he participated in and, and supported. So. When we, when we look at those scholarships, sometimes we have people ask us, well, what's up with this criteria? Right. Well, the goal is to honor the person that this is about. And so these are just kind of a glimpse of, the, there are some scholarship funds that we have at the foundation that I never had the opportunity to meet the folks, but they honor them in a way that you kind of get a glimpse about what they were, what was important to them. So. Yeah. Um, need to need to see this and, and a really great um, scholarship memory mem remembering somebody that was really important in our community for for so long so okay so your last one see if you can be perfect on this all right Fulton County Parks and Recreation Department sustainability fund I think this goes to help uh, the Department of Parks and Recreation. Yes, this this is this is for specifically for the County Parks Department, but okay. I think we're going to give you an A plus today for the quiz. I'll take. You it. studied all night. For I'll, this, I'll, didn't I would have taken an A. <laughs> an A. Okay. Well, you know it's interesting. The other night I was watching Jeopardy, and there are some schools that don't give A pluses. It yeah. is the highest grade you can get. I know that's very interesting. I didn't know that before. I didn't. I think we were probably watching the same probably. Jeopardy. So, so the Fulton County Parks and Recreation Department Sustainability Fund, this was one that was actually 
um, created by the Community Foundation in the partnership with the Parks Department. It helps support um, the county parks. Okay. Um, we've ha we've had a county park system for a number of years, and, and they've done a really amazing job. You look around the community, you start seeing places like out by Lighters Ford, where they have a, a neat little landing and picnic area. You've got Prairie Edge Nature Park. You've got the new one, Richland Restoration Nature Park, and, and a number of properties, and, and they're still working on developing those and more. Um, but it, it's neat to have some outdoor recreation space in our community. So this this fund is also a designated fund, but it's it was a little bit different in the fact that um, through some grants that we've provided for them, part of part of what we talk with organizations is, okay, so you've got a project, you've got it done. Well, think about long-term sustainability for this. Yeah. When this project needs some maintenance, it's not always going to be new. It may need some upkeep. In, in the case of a park, you think about things like, well, who's going to mow it? Yes. Who's going to take care of the driveways? Who Who's going to take care of these shelters as they maybe need painted or, or things maintenance things like that so so the long-term sustainability is something that we really talk about a lot with endowment funds and and that's what the parks department is looking at for this kind of that that future needs as those things are developed and then need some upkeep or maybe at some point they the I would hate to know how long it takes to mow all the parks that Ooh. they maintain but do a really great job of that um, things like that to keep them to not only build them but right. to keep them nice right and so that's where this fund will come in with the parks department to help them be able to maintain those things so so that's just kind of a glimpse of the the real world application of some of these concepts that we've talked about yeah. some funds that that help things like um, entertainment in our community help animals help organizations help students help maintain things and, and improve that quality of life. So um, one question we get is, well, you know, when somebody sets up this fund, why is this organization eligible to apply for it? Or why does it support this specific cause? And, and all of these funds were created by donors to say, hey, we want to support this specific thing. Right. So, um, so for somebody that doesn't have a fund and wonders, it's that fund founder that comes in and says, hey, I have have a cause that I want to support. I want to be able to do this, or I want to be able to support this organization. Um, so that's the neat thing when we start looking, and I encourage folks, if you have time, check out our website, nicf.org, and you can see a Fulton County Funds page and see all the funds that have been created by donor and re donors and read a little bit about those funds um, and, and what they support. Um, so you kind of get a glimpse of, of those things. So it's, it's really neat to see when we look at having over 200 endowment funds yeah. in Fulton County, um, how donors have supported these things. So, so I'd be remiss to not thank all of the donors that have made these and many more funds possible in our community. So, right. So with that, just a couple of reminders. Um, talked about the nonprofit education workshops. If you have ideas, don't hesitate to reach out to us or requests, maybe sit down and think about what do we as an organization need to know more about. Yeah. Let us know and we'll work to bring those topics to the community. Um, the Poverty Simulation and Bridges Out of Poverty, um, April 26th and 27th. Um, more information will be coming out about those in the next couple of weeks. Um, registration will open on March 1st for both of those. Um, and so we'd love to have you join us for one or both of those um, opportunities as well. Um, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us, um, Fulton at NICF.org. Um, give us a call, 574-224-3223. Um, you can find a lot of information about us on Facebook under Northern Indiana Community Foundation or stop by our office, 227 East 9th Street, and talk about any ideas, questions, concerns, visions, big dreams, big dreams big, for the big future. Dreams. We'd love to, love to talk to you about how we can help. And real quick, uh, what hours are you guys open? We are open Monday through Friday, um, 8 a.m. to 
if there are folks that are listening that that time doesn't work for them, but they would like to sit down with us and have a conversation, um, don't hesitate to reach out for, to us. We can make accommodations for evenings, weekends, whenever folks are available. All right. So, well, Brian, thank you so much for stopping by and talking with us again about uh, everything going on at the Community Foundation. I appreciate you having us. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you again in a month. Looking forward to it. Thanks. You're listening to Fulton County Chamber of Commerce.